our Alabama versus Texas A&M preview coming at you guys on today's show. Before we get into it, we need you to like today's video to send the good energy so the Crimson Tide take down the Aggies on the road this weekend. Last real preview we did was against Texas. We did not get to 200 likes. Alabama lost that game. Let's make sure that does not happen this time. Like today's video right now if you haven't already done so as I've been talking here. A lot more than 200 of you are going to watch it, so don't be the one who jinxes it. Like this video right now. The Crimson Tide on the road for a very difficult SEC matchup at Kyle Field. It's the, uh, the, the premium CBS slot, I'll, I'll call it that way, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time. The align continues to move in favor of AM. It is down to one and a half points for the Crimson Tide. That is a very small line. Has me a little bit anxious because Vegas tends to know what they're doing. And I thought that line might be a little bit more in favor of the Crimson Tide. I thought it was a surprisingly uh, small line against Ole Miss. Vegas knew. I'm a little bit worried they know again this time around. The Crimson Tide have kind of righted the ship since SEC play got going. They took care of business against Ole Miss, ran away with the win against Mississippi State. But I would argue this is maybe the best team the Crimson Tide have played since Texas. Maybe. At least the, the road environment certainly makes it feel like it's that way. AM, and meanwhile, I'm not sure how good they really are. Uh, they blew out New Mexico. Okay, cool. They kind of got their butts kicked by Miami, but that Miami offense is a much better passing attack than what the uh, Alabama football team has right now. Blew out UL Monroe, took care of business against Auburn, who also gave Georgia a good game, and then beat Arkansas. I, maybe that Arkansas game you can learn some stuff from, given how much they like to, to run the football as well, but this is not an easy matchup nor an easy game for the Crimson Tide. Plus, Jimbo Fisher's had some success in recent years against Alabama. So head-to-head -head comparison here between the Texas A&M offense and the Alabama defense. A&M's aired it out with some great success, although there has been a very material change on that front. We'll get into here in a little bit. They can run the football pretty well. They've scored a bunch of big points. Uh, they've had success through the air. The, the overall PFF grade is good. But everything that A&M has done well, Bama's been better at. I do think Bama's defense is going to keep them in this football game and give them some real shots at having success. Who do you think has been Alabama's defensive MVP so far this season? Is it Dallas Turner? Is it Kool-Aid McKinstry? Is it somebody else? Uh, maybe Deontay Lawson. Sound off at the comment section right now. The big change here is that, at least of late, is that Max Johnson is going to continue to start for a uh, A&M as uh, Connor Wigman is injured. This is not the first time that A, Bama has faced a Texas A&M backup quarterback. They did that back in 2022. And it is not the first time that they would have faced uh, Max Johnson in games. Remember, he began his career at LSU. We'll spend some more time here on Johnson. It is a big loss, though, uh, Connor Wigman going down. He'd been playing pretty solidly for the Aggies. 8.2 yards per attempt, uh, eight touchdowns, two interceptions, uh, against mostly better competition than what Max Johnson has faced. Johnson has been streaky, I'll say, over the course of his collegiate career. You know, Jimbo, Jimbo's the quarterback whisperer, but he hasn't been the quarterback whisperer as of late, and I am not convinced Max Johnson is going to have a big-time game. Here's what Nick Saban said on the new A&M starting quarterback. He's a good player. He's got a lot of experience. He's smart. He makes good decisions. He's been in the uh, system with Jimbo for a long time. So he's a veteran player. The quarterback that got hurt was a very good player, but he's a very, very good player. He's played well against us in the past. We have a lot of respect for him. I don't really see a lot of difference in their ability to be productive and use weapons they have to run the ball effectively as well as do a good job of passing it. I might dispute this idea that uh, Max Johnson's played well against Alabama. Uh, I mean... 11 of 17 for 110. For one it's actually not that bad. 16 of 32 for 162 scores and a 19. He'll make some plays for you and against you. Uh, I actually feel pretty good about the Bama defense against the AM offense. It's just, you know, the offense for Bama is still not where I want it to be. So, what is your confidence 
in Alabama's defense taking on the Texas A&M Aggies offense. Scale this for me from 1 to 10. 1 on the low end, 10 on the high end. Let's flip the sides of the field here, go to the Alabama offense against the Aggies defense. Bama can run the football better than what A&M has allowed so far this year. Big stark differences in points per game, but which makes certain sense. I, I do think, I, I, I look at this graphic, I see, okay, A&M's pass defense is, is okay. Their run, D, their run D has some weaknesses. And that's where Alabama is going to have to have success. They're going to have to be able to run the football effectively, not turn the football over, and do what we thought they were going to do to begin the year. Run offense, defense, carry them to victories the way that they used to do under Nick Saban. Now, today's show is made possible by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, it's just you and the numbers. No pros, no sharks. That is it. You just pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings and earnings roll in. Uh, earlier this week, we said, hey, Prize Picks not have the Bama game up yet. Now they do. It was going to happen. Just got to be patient, right? Here are my three picks for this game. I've got more than on a half rush touchdowns for Jace McClellan. So one Jace McClellan score, all I'm looking for there. I've got less than 217.5 Max Johnson passing yards. Reason being, he's never hit that figure at, at AM. Has not happened yet. Anaya Smith, one of his top receivers, I'll go less than 49.5 receiving yards as well. Uh, I love the flex play on this, but, 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 but I'm not scared. I'm going to go power play, which is 5x your return. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS for a first deposit match when you use code CLNS. Link will be in the comments and the description of today's show. But again, folks, it's prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use that code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Let's go back to the offense. Here's what Nick Saban said about the Texas A&M pass rush. Quote, I think we have to do a much better job having a firm pocket and protecting the quarterback against really good pass rushers. I also think it's important that we get the ball out of our hand on time so we don't give them an opportunity to affect us. So it's a combination of both. Combination of the receivers getting open, playing fast so that we can make quick decisions about what we do and how we get rid of the football. It will, of course, once again be Jalen Milrow at the helm for Alabama against AM, which I'll make note, by the way, is where he got his first start. He had a very unique game against the Aggies. Uh, they, poor family, took care of business. 12 of 19 for 111 yards, three touchdowns, three turnovers, by the way, which is going to be a big factor this when you can't turn the, cannot turn the football over, have to protect it. 81 yards on the ground. This was uh, you know, a game after Bill O'Brien once said, uh, that Milrow couldn't throw the ball. I'm, I'm only paraphrasing slightly, too. It was kind of wild that Bill, I think he meant not as well as Bryce Young, but it was still kind of a, a wild comment to make to the CBS uh, sideline crew there. Now, we will have a post-game reaction for you guys, courtesy of producer Chris. As soon as that game wraps up, we'll break down all the stuff that happened, the good, the bad, and hopefully not any of the ugly. So make sure you are subscribed, youtube.com slash at Roll Tide TV. The noise in this one is certainly going to be a factor for Alabama. The 12th man, uh, I, I will continue to call it a cult. It is at a and but it's also accurate. That's not a joke. They, they will be loud. Best way is to protect the football, take an early lead, and try to do what you can to take that crowd out of it. Milrow cannot turn the football over. Fumbles, interceptions, goes for the ground game too. You cannot make those mistakes, and you have to avoid, uh, you know, modern-day football, everyone craves the, uh, you know, the, the splash plays on offense, the explosive plays. You have to avoid explosive plays on defense, too, allowing sacks to happen. When, when you're on offense, you can't let the defense get those explosive plays. O-line must stay composed. It has been really inconsistent as far as I'm concerned so far this year. Hopefully, that does not continue to be the case. Uh, back to the noise point, by the way, here's what Nick Saban said. It's important in terms of dealing with it. We've been emphasizing it all week, but tomorrow, that's uh, Thursday, by the way, is always the day that we practice with noise. I know the centers and quarterbacks have worked a little bit extra on that with the noise this week. 
But Thursday will be the day that we need to really go through the whole practice and be able to deal with the noise. And that's when you can see how much it's going to impact the players. We've had some issues with the snap count. So hopefully that's not going to be a problem for us and we can get that resolved. How you're into October or October and you have snap count issues, ugh, I don't know. But before we get to producer Chris's score prediction, because I don't know if you guys want to see mine this week, predict the score to Alabama against Texas A&M. Get those answers in for me in the comments section right now. Producer Chris has Alabama edging out a narrow road win, 24 to 20. I certainly hope you are correct for your own mental health. Uh, you might not be in a good mood on Sunday because you lose this one. Uh, your season in terms of college football playoff is kind of teetering on the edge, if not already over. You'd pretty much have to win every game and the rest of the way, and I don't know how realistic that is. So get your score predictions in. Remember to like the video if you haven't already to get the Crimson Tides uh, chances up of taking down A&M.